first and foremost, I didn't read. Uh, I didn't read. I mean, my team kind of gave me the gist of what they what was put out. Um, but it, it's 100. percent It's a fact. Like, just think of the logic, okay? Just real quick. Just think of the logic of of us coming up with the bright idea to call him out of the blue and try to pluck his head trainer, knowing that it's going to be a rematch. But just pause on that that topic for one second. He incriminated himself <laughs> by saying, if they would have took my offer, I might be over here. What does that say about him or his team and what's going on? So I think that says it all, but without you know getting too deep into it because the truth's going to come out, and I'm going to let my team put it out however they want to put it out. It's too much. Too, too many, it's too much of a trail. It's called damage control. Well, first and foremost, let me just give you the real gist of it, how I can. Um, you know, my, my attorney has uh, a relationship with John David. Um, they've got some fighters that they work with together, et cetera, et cetera. And before the fight, they didn't do much talking, obviously. It was what it was. And then after the fight, <clears throat> you know, he reached out and just started complaining about the way he was being treated. You know, he was complaining about the fact that whoever the Russian coach was, I don't know, that he wasn't able to talk in the corner, that right before he walked out to the ring, he was told he can't talk after a certain point in the fight, which I think everybody saw, and that he couldn't even understand the guy that was talking, so he didn't know the instructions that were being given to Kovalev. He was talking about how just Kovalev is just nasty with him. And I mean, how would I know that? Um, he talked about how he would love to join our team because he, he seemed like good people and Andre seemed like a good person to work with. And I don't think, you know, I think I would get along with Virgil. So when he brought that up, my team did what they were supposed to do. They, they vetted the situation. You know, they told me about it. Virgil's moving around training fighters. So he and I had, hadn't had a chance to talk. And as we deliberated about it, um, you know, they went back and forth and talked or whatever. And I think he came with some outrageous demand money wise and my team was like listen man, like it's not gonna happen like in other words we're doing you a favor like bringing you in you know I respect John Davis he's a former fighter former champion and um you know with him saying the way he was being treated I'm looking at it like look man like you obviously were on the other side and I didn't take personal the stuff you were saying before the fight but let's see if it makes sense now only problem with that is is once I digested it it don't take a rocket scientist to figure out if you're doing this to your top man, I can't trust you in the gym. And that's basically the conclusion me and Verge came to in about two minutes once we finally did get a chance to talk. We both agreed. A, I didn't want anybody taking anything away from Verge in the second fight. Oh, you guys needed John David Jackson. And B, I like peace in the gym. You know, and I only want people in here that are with the team, for the team, and people that can be trusted. And that's the individual that even if you haven't signed paperwork you don't know what he's doing at, at you know at night in his hotel room with the other side so if he's doing that to his guy what would he do to this side so we killed the situation and then um it came out when it came out but but i have one of the the best trainers in the world and no disrespect to john david but that's not the first time we fought john david that was the second time we fought john david and john david hasn't done anything in my perspective as a trainer to make me want to ditch my trainer, add to my trainer. My trainer's enough. Even early in my career, when I got knocked down, and people were like, oh, you need a pro trainer. I stuck with my godfather because I know he's, he's the guy. And he showed that in the last fight that he's the guy. So there's, there's absolutely no reason for us to want to reach to the other side. Like, that's not even part of my character. I wouldn't even think about doing something like that. But what happened is he got in too far. He got in too deep. And even during the deliberating process, he gave up way too much information about what had been going on, what was going on in their camp, why he was unhappy, disgruntled, et cetera, et cetera. That's why you didn't see him at any of the press conferences. They were negotiating to see if he was going to come back. Mm. That was the whole thing. So if you look at my career, every interview I've done, I don't make stuff up, man. I, I don't play games. I'm, I'm a straight shooter. Like, that's a fact. That happened. Now, how they handle it and deal with it on their side, that has nothing to do with me. But the reality is, is him being a former fighter, he broke a cardinal rule. We don't do that. This is a very sacred place, the gym. 
what happens in the gym stays in the gym. And, and I feel like even if you had a situation, that's one thing if he broke ties and said, I'm done, you know, I would love to come over here and these are the reasons why, and he never went back, you can kind of respect that more, but playing both sides, we're not going to fall for that. And that's why we didn't accept him on the team.